Good evening, and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Aguian, and these are some of the top stories we have for you tonight. A domestic violence murder suspect is on the streets. Don't miss our exclusive interview with the victim's mother. We'll tell you about Vitima's tests coming up, and the latest on the Paul E. Joseph Stadium. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. <laughs> Our top story tonight, the mother of a domestic violence victim is angry. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this exclusive interview. Okay, thank you very much, Jerome. We're going to get right to it. A very touching story, that's for sure. I'm here with the mother of James Gaston. You might remember it was just a couple of weeks ago that Unfortunately, he was involved in a serious domestic uh, violence dispute with his mate. Over 56% of his body burned flow. Um, he died in your arms in a Puerto Rico hospital. And now you're here for the first time on camera. I know that you can't say much. You know, we go back a while, so it's kind of hard to see you in this position. I know that you are a fashion designer, um, long time, and you're a hardworking mom, and that was your heart. We're seeing his picture right now. Flo, what is going on right now uh, of the suspect? That is Donna I. Webb. Is that her name? Uh, Donna Webb. Donna Webb. Yeah. Where is Donna Webb right now? Apparently, she's still out on bail. Um, AG office is, is, is gathering evidence and trying to get the warrant signed to rearrest her and murder charges right now. Um, I know, I, I know it's kind of hard for you, but I literally had to beg you to come on camera and some of your close confidants said you need to come public with this. Before people hear my two cents, and you will hear my two cents, and I want to um, bring out these lovely nieces of yours that have in loving memory, one of them is like a twin, they say, right? You, they say, James, and you could have been like twins. Yeah, What's your name? Ishan Nanzan, that's my other half. Yeah, you miss your cousin. You miss James, don't you? Very much. He was a good brother? He was more than a good brother. He was a loving brother. He didn't meant... Apparently, he didn't... It's just too much to handle. He didn't deserve what he got. All right, Flo. All he did... I mean, all my child did was be a good man. He was... All he did was go, go hungry to feed this woman and her children. Mm -hmm. Children that was not even his. I mean, even my mother fed this woman and her children. To become to my house, my mother's house. Uh, my son didn't deserve to die that way just to be a good man. There are a bunch of men out there that are very good men that are being suffered by domestic violence and they're not getting the fit share as a female in this territory. And that's not fair because my son was a good boy. I raised my son to be strong. Okay. My son did not deserve to die for being a good man. Flo, uh, I'm going to say something here now. Um, you know, Jerome and I, y'all, y'all, y'all gather her up. I will no longer wear my domestic violence ribbon over my heart for the rest of this month of October until this suspect is behind bars. I feel that the domestic violence, anti-domestic violence system is biased. Anytime that a man suffers at the hands of a woman for domestic violence, I feel that they should be treated the same way that a man is in the courts and in prison. Now, there are obviously various degrees uh, and underlying circumstances involving everything here that we talked about. Every person is considered innocent until they are proven guilty in court. I just leave you these three people here as I wrap up this report. Look at the grieving. Look at how they feel. Now you understand why I understand what the women's coalition say when they say, Zero tolerance for domestic violence. No, the male gets the same treatment as the female. No, they don't. Just that my son should have not died that way for being a good man. And all I said is that you good men out there, just please stand still, stand fast, 
please don't be a, a, a victim of these vicious women out there. Trust me, they're vicious women out there. I'm feeling it right now. My poor 25 year old, my first one. Right. And again, it's it could go men or women. Uh, there is no, again, no acceptance for domestic violence or any violence for that matter. Somebody has to stand up for the young god, young man of this territory who has been abused. Somebody has to do it. Okay, the mother of James Gaston. That's Flo Gaston, and at least she is with loving family today. And she has to go back to work this afternoon after this, just to continue to put bread on the table. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes, and again, our condolences to her family. And in other news tonight, Vitima will be conducting several emergency tests during the next few days. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this report. All right, thanks a lot, Jerome. I'm here with Vitima Executive Director, General Elton Lewis. We're gonna get right to it, General. It's first of all, I wanna say, knock on wood, we're not all the way through this. Let's remember Lenny, who came in uh, the back way and it was around Thanksgiving. Uh, but so far, so good down island, we're looking good and at least we're stronger, safer, smarter. You know all the do's and don'ts, but don't uh, take your guard down yet. We still got a, another, uh, what, five or six weeks left. All right, General Elton Lewis, we have another testing of our emergency warning alert. I want to call it a tsunami alert, but it's more than that. And the manufacturer, General, of those alarms and so forth are going to be demonstrating it um, for a few days uh, later in the week. Thank you so much. I know you're very busy this morning. Well, uh, thank you very much, and uh, good morning to the uh, people of the Virgin Islands. That is correct. The American Signal Corps, uh, who is the manufacturer for the installation of the all-hazard sirens, are, are back in the territory. Um, as you can recall, in August, we, are, uh, we conducted uh, the test of the tsunami uh, or the all-hazard siren system uh, throughout the territory. And at the same time, uh, after those tests were completed, and after action report were submitted to the office of the governor or to the governor himself uh, from all three of the uh, territories, basically giving a status in, in terms of the sirens. There were seven messages that was tested at that time. And what we had asked the general population to do is to report back to us either through email, through uh, Facebook or Twitter in terms of the, the functions of these sirens. Um, one, the, the tone, they could, can they hear the tone during the time and where they were at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, the pitch and so forth. Well, after the, com after the completion of the uh, tests, we received all of the reports uh, from all of the territories, and which I, I have to thank all of the people that were involved in the survey itself. Um, they, they actually really stepped up and provided that information through either one of those mediums that I that I mentioned. As a result of that, um, we contacted the American Signal Corps and presented our report to them, and basically outlining all of the deficiencies or all of the issues that were reported to us uh, during the testing phase. And as a result of that, they are back here in the territory um, uh, to make all of the necessary adjustments on the sirens uh, throughout the territory. They will be on St. Thomas uh, today, in fact, as we speak, and uh, Tuesday on the island of St. John, and Wednesday on the island of St. Croix, making all of the adjustments and making any um, uh, last-minute last technical uh, notion on these uh, sirens. One thing I know for sure that they, they are going to increase the wattage. We had uh, a radio signal that was 25. They're going to move that up to 50 uh, percent, so give us a better clarity. So that's what's happening uh, with the siren. General Elton Lewis, Executive Director of Vitima, even though for a short time, he's got this place up and running. Congratulations to he, Christine Lett, and his entire staff. They're really doing a bang up job at this, making sure that we're safe, disaster preparedness. That's what it's all about. Downtown at the Vitima headquarters on St. Croix, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes. And police still need your help in finding a missing 21-year-old St. John woman. Here's Melody Rames with the details. 
Police on St. John are asking the community's assistance in locating 21-year-old Sierra Samantha James. Police have been searching for James since she was reported missing to police by her family on Thursday, October 13th. And police are now asking for the community's assistance in locating her. James is 5 foot 5 inches tall and weighs 120 pounds. She has brown eyes, black hair, and a medium build. She has a tribal tattoo on her right arm, Pascal written on her back, and a rose on her left leg. She was last seen wearing a white t-shirt, black pants, and carrying a black handbag. James was at Castaway Bar on Tuesday, October 11th. She left the bar shortly after 5 p.m. and was seen by Mongoose Junction Nature's Nook and by Power Boy. If you have seen Sierra Samantha James, have any information regarding where she has been recently or know anything that would assist police with this case, you are asked to immediately call the Leander Jurgen Command Officers at 693-8880, Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-TIPS, or you can call 911. Thanks, Melody Rames of the Virgin Islands Police Department. When we come back from this break, we'll take a look at your Caribbean report plus a word from the animal shelter here on St. Croix. Stay with us. And let's take a look at your Caribbean report for tonight. In your Caribbean report tonight, we start in St. Lucia, where 52 kilos of cocaine were seized by St. Lucian police officers. Three individuals who were charged by police for drug-related matters have all been remanded to the Bertie Alice Correctional Facility. The incident occurred at about 7.55 p.m. on Saturday at La Croix, Manicot, Castries, where police intercepted a Mazda four-door van. A thorough search of the vehicle revealed a quantity of 47 kilos of cocaine. The two occupants of the vehicle were arrested and taken into custody. Further investigation led police to the residence of a woman in Latoc Road, Castries, near the tunnel where a search was conducted and a quantity of five kilos of cocaine were found. The woman and two occupants were taken into custody. And turning now to Haiti, the month of October used to be the cruelest month of the year in Haiti. It is the month where parents must find full tuition for payment for their children's education. The previous Haitian government has been so delinquent in their mission of educating their children that 80% of the education system is in the hands of the private sector. Joseph Michael Martelli, the president of Haiti, has made education the cornerstone of his administration. He has not been afraid of the IRE of some of the members of the dysphoria, as he plans to raise $300 million to send all school-aged children to class free of charge for their parents. The business of providing excellent education to the children of the nation is not the business of the parents. It is the business of the state. The business of the parents is to provide and enrich the nourishing support that education received to their children. State's President Michael Martelli. And finally tonight, an update on the murder of Zambu. According to a press release by Commissioner of Police Selvin G. Ron Wall Wynn, who is out of the Federation on official duty, has recently returned and filed a report on the homicide. The release states that during a series of operations conducted by a recently formed Delta Squad, two men were arrested and taken into custody on suspicion of allegedly murdering Noel Zambu Heath. The release indicate that the investigation into the matter is still ongoing, and Police Commissioner wishes to thank the public for their tremendous support of the police. Heath was 61 years old and was shot outside of his home just before 5 a.m. on Friday, October 14th, while preparing to visit his farm. And that's your Caribbean report for tonight. And the St. Croix Animal Shelter needs our help during the ASPCA Pet Challenge. Let's take a look. All right, Jerome, you Pet Vista volunteer, you. Yeah, man. Here with Gretchen, Cheryl, the executive director of the St. Croix Animal Shelter, also Melissa. And we got like a new little baby here. We're going to be looking at Adopt-A-Pet. It's all about the American, uh, the Animal Shelter Challenge, this national, right, Gretchen? And then St. Croix Animal Shelter. Uh, we have a challenge here. Tell us what the challenge is all about and how y'all doing up here. Well, we've been in this for, it seems like almost a year now, but it's been about six months since we, we got started with it. And um, it's coming to a close on October 31st. So the, the finale ends kind of the way that we began with a vote off. So we need everybody who voted back in uh, April to get on their computers again and vote for us. Uh, it, the voting starts today, October 17th, and it goes to the end of the month, the 31st. 
You go can go once a day to vote to save lives org, vote to save lives, and vote once with your uh, email. Vote one time per day until the 31st. You do not have to reside on St. Croix to vote. So we did really, really well in the vo voting portion earlier in the year, and we're hoping that everybody comes out and supports the cruise and pets, and we have lots of adoption specials going on through the end of the month, and, and Melissa, our adoptions coordinator, can talk to you about that. I would ask Melissa if she knows what time it is, but it looks like I watch this little baby is, 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 is pickpocketing you for the watch. I, look at What's her name? Uh, her name's Ariel. She, Hi, Ariel. She's about three and a half months old. Oh. She's got two sisters also here, and... Um, she loves playing in the water, and she's a real sweet, sweet little girl. Oh, man. Look at her. She is precious. She really is. She's spayed and up to date on her vaccines and ready to find a home. So. All right. Well, we've got to make sure we get her adopted. Then. <laughs> all right. So any last thoughts here, Gretchen? How y'all doing? Are you, you got all your spay and neuter and all those tactics going? That's right. You know, we um, we uh, all our pets are, are spayed and neutered and fully vetted, and we just need people to come out and take advantage of our adoptions. We have several specials throughout the end of the month. We um, have free cats for approved adopters on Friday, free cat Friday. So if free you're if you're looking for a, a cat, please come out on Friday and check out our cats. And I uh, just wanted to, uh, you know, ask everyone to please, you know, remember your shelter, please support us. You know, we're always in need of funds, of uh, supplies, Ooh. and right now we need your vote. So please go online and, and vote for us today through the 31st. Okay. Thank you very much, Gretchen, Cheryl, and also Melissa here, and all the volunteers and the folks that donate things to the St. Croix Animal Shelter, and you, you little watch bandit. You know, yeah, man, it's it's all good. And special place is my heart with you people who take care of our op overpopulated pets and abused pets and so forth. Every time I come here, it's just like these these humans know what I'm saying. And sometimes it makes me think, who are the animals, you know, in life? All right, mama, somebody will pick you up. At the St. Croix Animal Shelter, please do what you can. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes, and be sure and get on the internet and vote for the St. Croix Animal Shelter. I did this morning. When we come back from this break, the latest on the Paul E. Joseph Stadium. Stay with us. And the question of the infrastructure for the Pauly Joseph Stadium is on the minds of many of our community. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this report. Thank you, Commissioner. Now we're addressing a situation dead west at Pauly Joseph, where recently we had a soccer tournament here, and we did have some opposition to that, some protests, as a matter of fact, as people were a little bit upset that, yeah, we, when visitors come, we could, uh, we could get the place nice, spruce it up. Same thing with the trap line. When trap leaks get here, we try to get the potholes out of the way. What is going on with Polly Joseph? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that, that Polly Joseph grounds have always been available for use by the community, okay? Not the stadium, because the stadium is in a dilapidated condition. It's unsafe. It would be dangerous. So we have even worked with the Baseball Association. We have fixed up the field when they have wanted to use it, okay? And, and in this situation here, we the sucker federation came to us about using field, and it's not the first time that they use it because it's a multi-purpose facility because we have used it for other things for shows and so forth and in, in terms of the only thing that we had to do was is ensure that the lights were working the soccer federation came in and they did everything the bleachers that you see on the side they are the ones who fixed it up okay. the locker rooms that you see they, they came in they cleaned it out they washed it down they put on shower heads and everything oh. they tried to ensure that the you know the, it's limited use of the restroom facility they came in and 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 fixed it in a way that it could be we, you know we could use it in a limited way okay well, so we could get local volunteers to do the same thing can't uh, we well of course you know we, we could do a lot of things here if we really want to okay so, and, and, and this was an, an international tournament uh, that basically benefited St. Croix. And what they're going to spend and, money and, and not only that, they it's have to our, eat here and sleep here. Sure, and it's our local team that the Haitians uh, and, and the other islands came in to play here, okay. here at St. Croix. That could have been held someplace else. Yeah, so, you we know, would have lost revenue. Definitely. And no one got hurt. Well, of so. course, of course. All right, and what are the plans And, 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 and then I also want to say is that, you know, uh, the Pauli Joseph Stadium has been one of the biggest um, I say um, 
project that we have been working on. You said that okay? when you first took yes. the job. Yep. And we, we put out a proposal, a request for proposal. We, we got proposals in. We, they were evaluated. And right now, we have been in negotiation with, 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 with the proponent, the developer, who we are going to be working with for a public-private partnership that's going to give you an immaculate facility down there. I am hopeful that within the next couple of weeks that we'll be able to come out with a major announcement in regarding that facility. And we're talking over a $50 million project that we're going to provide us with a, with a baseball stadium. It's going to provide us with other sports stadium that's going to provide us with, with um, the, the ability to have sports tourism here. It's going to benefit our youths here because there will be professional athletes that will be coming in. Well, but then our youths, yes, and then our youths here yeah. will have a, a, a ready professional facilities in which they can utilize okay, okay? so I, and i'm really looking forward to that and i'll tell you it, it, you know i i am not happy that how long it has taken sure. but we have been making sure that we do due diligence and i'm telling you everyone should be pleased with what we will be coming out with shortly regarding the college of the stadium and it will be a real economic booster uh for the town of Fredericksburg the whole of St. Croix and the entire Virgin Islands. All right, thank you. He's one of those commissioners that calls to be back within three to five minutes. He doesn't hide, that's for sure. Uh, so that's uh, St. Clair Williams, Commissioner, Housing, Parks, and Recreation. Thank you very much for that update on Paulie Joseph Stadium. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8.